Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Synology NAS for backups and to vastly increase your available storage and how not to set it up for 10 gigabyte video editing. Stay tuned and I'll show you what I mean. I'm Rob Moore and I help people grow their freelance businesses mainly with Fiverr. I talk about things like how to edit videos, create video tutorials, recording voiceovers for making videos, and even making YouTube videos like this. And I help with all the software, tech, and skills you need to be successful with all of it. If these sorts of things interest you, please consider subscribing. So I've got a couple of problems that I need to address. The first problem I have is storage space. I'm running out. What I currently have is a one terabyte SSD drive inside my PC that is used for system files, Windows, and all the software and programs I use. I then have a second internal drive that is a two terabyte SSD, and it's on that drive that I store all my files, all the work I do for my clients, video and audio files, as well as some personal files, photos, videos, etc. I like to keep my system and program files separate from my data files, mainly for better organization. That way, I know all my data files are on their own drive. When my two terabyte drive starts filling up, I move some of my older files over to a third drive, a four terabyte external hard disk drive. Since I like to keep all my client files, the files they provide, as well as the files I generate as a result of the work I do for them, I find myself quickly running out of space. With my current system, I could just get another four terabyte external drive and start filling that one up too. So that's the first problem. I need more storage space. And I really don't like the idea of growing a library of external hard drives that will become harder and harder to find what I'm looking for. The second problem I have is my backup system. I don't have one, not a good one anyway. I do have a Google Drive account, and I keep a backup of my most important personal and business files there. And that's certainly better than nothing, but what I really should have is a proper 3-2-1 backup strategy. That is, to have three copies of my data stored on two different devices, and at least one of the copies should be at a different location. The copies on two different devices part is in case one drive fails, I have a copy of the files on a second device or drive. But in the event of a fire or flood, something bad happening at the location where both those devices are, for example, your home or your office, you could potentially lose both those copies of your files. That's why it's also good to have a third copy of your files stored off-site or in a different location. So in my existing setup, the external four terabyte drive I use is certainly a different device than my PC, but it doesn't have a copy of what's in my two PC drives. So it's not a backup. It's where I move files to to make room for new files in my PC. I only have one copy of a lot of my client files. Granted, they are essentially backups of what I've already delivered to them, but the whole point of me keeping a copy of the work I've done is if my clients return and want me to do additional edits on a past job. I could then just retrieve the old client files that I've saved. So with this Synology NAS, I'm going to have significantly more storage space, and I'm also going to be able to start implementing a proper backup solution. So let's take a look at the NAS. This is the Synology DS1621 Plus NAS. It has six drive bays, which can each hold drives, I believe, up to 16 terabytes in size. That is way more than I need, but it's nice to know that there's lots of room to grow. I'm starting out with three drives that are eight terabytes each, and that will give me a total of 16 terabytes of usable storage, since one of the drives will be used for the RAID 5 mirroring, which I'll talk a bit more later. I will then have three empty drive bays, and as my storage requirements increase, I'll be able to add eight terabyte drives into each of those, giving me a total of about 40 terabytes of usable storage space. On the back of the DS1621 Plus, you'll notice that there are four ethernet ports, each of which are one gig ports. That's fine for connecting to one gig ethernet home networks, and there are even ways to combine them using link aggregation to get four gig connection speeds, but I'm not gonna use those. Instead, I also purchased two 10 gig PCIe network adapter cards, one for the Synology and one for my PC. Okay, so remember at the beginning when I said how not to set up a NAS or how not to set up this NAS? Well, it turns out that the ASUS PCIe cards that I got are not compatible with the Synology NAS. So uh, it works fine in the PC, but the Synology did not recognize it. So I've gone ahead and I've ordered the correct uh, PCIe card from Synology, uh, and I should have that by next week. So with any luck, I will do another video in about a week, and I will show you how to set up the 10 gig networking. Okay, back to the video. 
I eventually plan on making my entire home network 10 gig, but for now I just want to connect my PC to the NAS via the 10 gig ports, and that's what's going to allow me to edit videos directly off the NAS as if the video files I edit are on my internal SSD drives. There are more expensive Synology NASs, NASs? NAS? NASs that include a 10 gig port out of the box, but they are currently about twice the price. So instead, I just went with the smallest Synology NAS that has the option for adding my own 10 gig network card, and that's the DS1621+. Plus. Another option would have been the 8 bay version, the DS1821+, Plus, but I didn't feel the need for 8 bays, and you've got to draw the line somewhere. I've included links to everything I'm using in this setup in the description below. The last thing I'll need are the drives themselves. When choosing drives for a NAS, you don't want to just get the cheapest drives you can find. You want to make sure you get drives that are made specifically for NAS setups. Seagate and Western Digital seem to be the companies recommended most for NAS drives, and their prices are comparable. Since I've always had good experiences with Seagate drives, I went with them. Their NAS drives are the Seagate Ironwolf NAS drives, and they're available in 2 terabyte sizes, 4 terabytes, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and even 20 terabyte sizes. The things I considered when choosing which drives to get was the total storage I wanted, the cost per terabyte, and the replacement cost should a drive fail. I went with the 8 terabyte drives because the cost per terabyte was among the lowest in the range and it wouldn't break the bank if I had to replace a single drive. I could also just start with 3 drives, the minimum required for RAID 5, and have room to add up to 3 more in the future. Whatever drive size you choose, you'll want to go with that size for all drives you put in your NAS if you're going to be using a RAID 5 configuration. Ok, so what is RAID? Well that's a little beyond the scope of this video, but suffice it to say that setting up your NAS in RAID 5 configuration means that if any one drive fails, you won't lose any data and that sounds great to me. You just have to replace that one failed drive and rebuild your RAID, something the Synology software makes it super easy to do. And it doesn't matter which drive fails, any one of the drives can fail and you won't lose any data. Just replace the failed drive and you're good to go. Why do all drives have to be the same size? Well, they don't. But if you do have different sized drives in your NAS and you put it in RAID 5, then it will count all drives as if they were the size of your smallest drive. So it would be a waste to have all 8 terabyte drives except for one 12 terabyte drive. The extra 4 terabytes in your 12 terabyte drive would not be recognized. So with this 6 bay Synology NAS filled with 8 terabyte drives, I'll be able to have about 8 terabytes times 5 drives equals 40 terabytes of usable storage. If I ever need more storage than that, there are two ways I could expand. I could either replace all my drives with larger drives, which would be a pain and quite time consuming, or I could get a Synology DX517, a 5 bay expansion unit, and connect that to the DS1621+. Plus. In fact, you can connect up to two of these 5 bay expansion units, giving you 10 additional drive bays. So there are plenty of ways to expand in the future if I need to, but for now, 16 terabytes with these three 8 terabyte drives in RAID 5 configuration will be just fine. Once the drives are loaded into the Synology NAS, connect the NAS to your network. In my case, I have a small 5 port switch under my desk that my PC, my laptop, and my ATEM Mini are connected to. So I'll just go ahead and plug one end of an Ethernet cable into the switch, and then the other end into one of the LAN ports in the back of the NAS. Connect the power cord to your NAS and press and hold the power button to power it up. Next, open your browser and go to find.synology.com and press enter. If at first your browser doesn't find your Synology, just wait a couple minutes and try again. Once your NAS is found, click connect. Agree to the end user license agreement, then click next. The Synology Web Assistant will launch. Click setup. You'll then be prompted to install the latest version of DSM or Disk Station Manager which is the software you'll use to access and control your Synology NAS. Click Install Now. Please note that setting up your Synology NAS with the drives you installed will erase any data you might have on those drives. So if you're using drives that aren't brand new and that you've perhaps used before, please double check that you've backed up everything you might want to keep that is on these drives. If, as in my case, you're setting up with new hard drives, this shouldn't be an issue. Click the checkbox to acknowledge that the drives will be erased during setup and then click OK. Your Synology will go through initializing and formatting your drives, and then will download and install DSM to your NAS. Once DSM has been downloaded, your Synology will automatically restart, and after what took me about 5 minutes, you'll get to the Welcome to DSM screen. Click Start, and then set up an administrator account for your NAS. For the Update option, I chose the recommended Automatically Install Important Updates Only option. Click Next. 
You can then create a Synology account and you can set up Quick Connect. Quick Connect will allow you to access your Synology NAS from anywhere. I just skipped this part for now. I can always set it up later. Then just click Submit. Next, the DSM will ask you to create your storage pool and volume. Click Create Now. You'll need to create at least one volume and one storage pool before data can be stored on your NAS. Click Start to begin the process. You'll be asked to select which RAID type you want your storage pool set up in. I'm not going to go into details on the different RAID types, other than to say RAID 5 is one of the more popular choices as it has a drive fault tolerance of one drive. That means that if any one of your drives fail, you won't lose any data and you'll just have to replace that one faulty drive. You need a minimum of three drives to use RAID 5 and as I mentioned earlier, I've chosen to use three 8 terabyte drives. With RAID 5 selected, I click Next. The Synology recognizes my three drives, which is great, so I'll choose all three drives and click Next. Be sure to choose how much of your available storage to allocate to this volume. I'll choose the maximum allowed and click Next. Leave the recommended file system selected and click Next again. And then finally, click Apply. You'll get another, final warning message that you're about to erase any data that exists on the drives in your NAS. Click OK. That's it! You'll see that your storage pool has been created and the optimization process will begin and run in the background. This process will take several hours but you can still copy files to the NAS while the optimizing occurs in the background. Once the optimization process is complete, you'll hopefully see here in the Storage Manager that your storage pool is healthy and all your drive's information will be shown here. In my case, I've got 7.3 terabytes of usable storage on each of my 8 terabyte drives. I can now use this increased space for all my storage needs and to set up backups for both my PC and my laptop. I can also set it up to be my own personal cloud for backing up my iPhone and iPad. And remember, I only filled three of the six available drive bays with drives, so if I need more space, I can add up to three more 8 terabyte drives, which will give me 7.3 terabytes each, or over 21 terabytes of additional space, that's 35 terabytes of total storage space should I ever need it. If you found this video helpful, click the like button and subscribe to this channel. It really does help me produce more content like this and you'll be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.